This is the Copper Crab Podcast. I'm Chaney Crab. Naveen Copperweiss here. Coming at you. I'm feeling good. I'm in a good mood, Chaney. Me too. <laughs> really good mood. <laughs> That's awesome. It's post Nam. Just a couple people here. Just in really good moods. <laughs> Pretty eventful weekend, didn't we? Yeah, we went to Nam, Nam, or as some people like to call it, Nam. <laughs> I'm pretty much a Nam vet at this point. Me too. It's my ninth Nam. This is my this is my eighth Nam, my eighth tour in Nam. That's that's hella offensive to people yeah, who know, actually really, really served in up. Nam. Yeah, yeah. Um, We're just being shitheads, straight up. Nam is nothing like Nam. What's Nam stand for? <laughs> yeah, did we find that out in the break? I looked I looked it up. You looked it up. What is yeah. it? Na- uh National Associations National Association of Music Merchants. Okay, so that makes sense. Yeah. Because for for those of you, if there is anyone listening to this show who doesn't know what NAM is, I'm sure there is. If you've been living under a rock. If you've been living under a rock, then <laughs> NAM uh what were you saying earlier? Nam used to be a place where it was strictly merchants and businesses, and the merchants would come and like buy a certain amount of instruments to take yeah, into their store. Yeah, that's still what it's for, believe it or not. Yeah, uh, and then eventually they started letting artists in, and now yeah. they also let the general public in. So what Nam? Yeah, so you said that you could straight up buy a ticket now, right? Yeah, I think that from what. Uh, a friend of mine told me you are a, you apply for some sort of list and then you pay like a hundred dollars to get in. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Okay, so it's not like anybody can just get in. You you it still is limited. Maybe, but on the last day on Sundays, everyone can get in. Oh yeah. But um, we never go on Sunday. We never go on Sundays. But what Nam is now to me is basically, um, cool you, you well you go and you. There are people, they're like, you'll see famous people from the internet or wherever giving demos or doing signings for the companies that endorse them. And uh, I don't know, you can watch cool performances and it's more like that than it is because we obviously don't go to, to buy anything. Cut deals. We go to like hang out with our yeah. homies. Yeah, so we pretty much just go to, I guess that sounds kind of messed up, but. I go to hang out with friends and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, you have a few endorsements. You always say hi to them. But yeah, and I felt really freaking bad. I feel terrible because you remember when we went to go get food on Saturday? Mm-hmm. Well, it was our plan to go back. Yeah. And at that point, I was going to go over and say hi to Minel. Oh, yeah. And then we wound up not going back. Right. So, like, I didn't even go to Minel. It's like know. a total dickhead move. There were so. there are always things that you want to accomplish at NAM that you don't end up accomplishing. There are a ton of people who you want to see. It's so hard to link up with people yeah. at NAM because so basically you kind of have to be in the same exact spot as people. Yeah. And um you know, hanging around all of the like guitar booths and all of that stuff generally is where th- that's where the people that we know, our friends uh, have head. endorsements the metal head if you will the gent community <laughs> the gent <laughs> and technical death metal progressive death they're core in the community. guitar world they're in the guitar and the drum world and the bass world so we were hanging out around there and yeah. ran into a lot of our homies but there are a lot of people i would have liked yeah. to see who we just didn't but i really like going over to the synth land software land yeah so that was fun went over there you know checked out some stuff yeah, there was some cool stuff. Uh, also, I think it should be said it's like hanging at the Hilton is where it's at. That's yeah. that's so really what we go to do. Right next to the convention center. Yeah, it's called the Hilton. I don't know if, if you guys have ever heard this type of hotel. Not a very common hotel around America. It's an exclusive thing, <laughs> but they have a bunch of um, performances in there. And it's just the closest place to the Anaheim Convention Center, so you just can go over there and 
you'll find a bunch of folks hanging out in there. So we saw a bunch of people that we've toured with and, you know, people that we know from the interwebs and all that stuff. And we saw Sinbad MC a performance with Kenny Loggins singing backup. I don't, I can't even remember who was performing. I don't know. I was a little uh, sauced <laughs> at Nam, so I can't Got a little totally, toasty. Got a little toasty at Nam. Yeah. Mom and dad stepped out for a party night. Yeah, we cut loose. So, uh, but we also, the highlight of my Nam, there were two highlights of my Nam. One was a little off premises. Premise? Premises? I don't Anyways. Know. Don't ask me. I didn't go to high school. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we met Jeff Garland from Curb, oh. Curb Your Enthusiasm. Jeff, so if you know, you know. We got to dap him. Yeah, I guess. Does that count as meeting? Um, No. <laughs> we are we were not. walking up, and I was like, Cheney, look who it is. And it was. I he swear was that like didn't texting. happen because I swear I didn't hear you say, Cheney, look I think who I just it is. Said it and real... I started tapping you. Yeah. We so were we both, both kind of doing this and like staring at him. And so then I he knew. spotted him and I, I was like, I just didn't say anything and hit him with a dap. And he's like, yeah, man, I agree. I agree. He's like, I agree, man. I agree. Man. And Boom. then I dapped him. So we, that's we, pretty yeah. much how, how we met Jeff Garland. So you <laughs> say him and I are pretty close. Yep. <clears throat> I call him JG. Oh, and, then we, and then right after him. Like a bald guy with glasses walked up, and we were like, <laughs> "And I was oh, like, Jeff. it's Larry fucking David. <laughs> Are you kidding me?" <laughs> so for about ten minutes, I thought every half bald guy with glasses yeah. was Larry. That David. That guy did look like Larry David, though. <laughs> he to really be fair. did. And then another guy, about two minutes later in the crowd, looked exactly like Larry David too. So. So yeah, we met not. Jeff Gar- Garland and now we're homies, ultimate homies. And okay, so. Then the thing that I was actually the most excited about for Nam, which ended up being fucking tight, was that we went to a venue in downtown L.A. and saw J.D. Beck and Domi play together. And that was super sick. That was amazing. And if you aren't aware, uh, J.D. Beck is a really sick drummer. I think this kid's like 17 years old. Yeah. Age doesn't matter. He fucking slays. And um, he plays with this sup- super sick keyboard player. I I believe you pronounce her name Domi. That's how he was saying it on stage. Oh, really? Yeah. I think I'm going to go with Domi. Domi, whatever. She's insane. Ridiculous. At keys. I mean, it's literally, like, um, problematic how good she is. I mean, Jesus Christ. It's absurd. It's in it's it's, it's so funny. It's so crazy how good she is that you can hear like little imperfections here and there and it means absolutely nothing to you cuz it's yeah. like this this girl is just murking I know. those and keys. I I'm not talking about like uh Vanessa Carlton good. No. You know, I'm talking about like they play giant steps and it's their own rendition and it's ama- it's fucking ridiculous. She can play the actual solo yeah i mean just go check out go uh check out her instagram if you haven't i mean she's played with like i was kind of creeping a little bit like where is this girl from did she just like appear but she's played with all kinds of people they play with thundercat they play with mono neon uh who was i telling you she she's played with they're like some sick drummers and shit i mean pretty serious yeah oh she she's played with mac miller she's played with like she's done a lot of shit she's she's really good she was playing bass essentially while playing lead yeah like playing bass with her left hand and playing a second keyboard that sounded like a bass right right so they i don't know it's just like cool jazzy but it's like hip jazz a hip spin on jazz it's got like because the drumming's not like you know, right. It's like breakbeat drumming. I mean, honestly, it's like there are parts of it that you could dance to. Yeah. I think they those two would be fantastic at like writing a song for Yeah. Uh like an R and B artist or something. It would just be super sick. It was awesome. I thought it was great. That was and a highlight. Funny. They were funny. And then right after that we went to uh di- downtown Disney and got these crazy ice cream shakes. Yeah. Wait. Uh, ice cream shake. Ice cream. <laughs> an ice cream shake. So we tried to go from from that. We were going to go to Tama was hosting like a little concert. Yeah. With uh, 
Polyphia, Covet, yeah, Polyphia, Covet, Steve Vai. Steve Vai. But it, like by the time we got there, it was pretty much over. So we yeah. went and got the ice cream shakes. Now that I'm saying all of this stuff out loud, Nam sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, like yeah, it sucks. It's, it's like, like, oh, dude, we, I don't know. We like got to go see Steve up fucking, you know, it's like, yeah. okay, Nam is sick. It was fun. And I got a Bitwig Studio shirt. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm there for the swag. As far as technology, I found something at the Bitwig uh, booth, which is your favorite DAW. You should love me you some know, Bitwig. You love Bitwig. I'm that's semi endorsed by Bitwig, I guess you could say. You're definitely a fanboy. That's for sure. I know. I found out, and they were like, "This fucking dude's crazy." Yeah. No, I was like, "That's cool." I I recognized uh, the girl's name who was working there, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Hey, I emailed you a bunch because I emailed her for like I think six months back and forth." Uh, not there. Uh, a lot, a lot of fourth, not much back. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a lot of advancing by Mr. Copperweiss and no. Not much on my side. I think I got like yeah. one response at some point. And then Le- I just it last, said, "Leave us alone." No, it was like, <laughs> "Please, yeah, leave that us sounds alone. cool." I was just trying to get the program for free. I'm not gonna lie. That's what I wanted. You know. Of course. Of course. But but, ru- but in my defense. I'm not trying to sound like a jerk, but it's like I talk publicly about stuff. I'm not asking like you to pay me to, for it. Yeah, just give me the thing. Just give me your goddamn program, okay? No, you know what no, I mean. I'm like people, because people will ask me all the time, like, "Oh, what do you use here and there?" And it's like, I want to endorse the product. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what I want to do. I mean, you it's wanna, not. You're trying to go. You're trying to be exclusive with this. Yeah. With this lady and she's not. Yeah. No, I mean, that's what I'm she's saying. She's not I'll, trying to wear your varsity coat, your yeah, Letterman's like, jacket. Yeah, it's like, I'll fucking put hashtag bitwig on every one of my posts and whatever. I mean, like I said, if I'm going to publicly recommend a thing and I'd like to know the company as also, well. Also, it's like you right? pretty much wear the same shirt like all the time. So, you know, that bitwig shirt you're just going to have on like. A lot, Almost except every for day. that it's white, so I got a stain on it already. Yeah, you got a stain on it within about ten minutes of having it. <laughs> but so anyway, I was just like, hey, you know, I'd love that's the how white that's how white uh, clothes go, though. You know. So I kept on bugging them until they gave they gave me a a nice artist price. Let's call it on the on the program. So, so are, are you endorsed? Are you endorsed? Be honest sort of, with yeah. us. I mean, you, I guess yes so. No. I got the artist cost on that bitch. Damn. Okay. So, I saw, I saw her. I recognized her name from her name tag, and I was just kind of talking to her a little bit. I was like, "Yeah, I bothered you a lot until you gave me the program." And then she, I don't think she really remember, remembered me. If I were her, I would find that endearing because it's like you not only like her enough to, or like her product enough to bug her for six fucking months about it but then you yeah, meet no, I've her been, at dude, i've been a fan I've, since this thing came out at the first nam that i went didn't to. we go didn't we go to the bitwig booth last year at nam i go every year because i totally remember that lady yeah i know working there last year yeah. yeah okay and i found out about bitwig at nam i don't know which nam it was but and i was like dang that's a really cool program because it's it's similar to ableton live which I like a lot. Yeah. Um, apparently, it's like some of the people who used to work at Ableton and they went and started their own thing. I'm not Ooh, exactly is sure. There a, is there something stolen there? Sort of. Ooh. Or did they come up wah, with it wah, and go somewhere wah. else? I don't know the backstory. Maybe we can clear it yeah, up Yeah, let's somehow. not call anyone out. <laughs> we don't know. Look, I don't <laughs> care. So, I saw it. It looked really cool because, you know, I'm into making electronic music obviously and stuff like that synthy shit so it has all these really cool in-depth controls for that type of thing um such oh, as that's cool so like there's all these different modulators in that program mm-hmm. so you can use these cool i don't want to get fucking too well whatever i'll just do it i'll just get i'll go there go for it so on we need we need like a little sound bite for when you go deep on some nerdy in- instrument shit yeah. Naveen's going deep on some nerdy instrument, oh, yeah, yeah. instrumental like, shit. Okay. A little uh, <laughs> jingle. Yeah, we need a jingle. Right, I can make one. And we got to think of a name for that, too, when I go nerdy. Yeah. Okay, to be thought of. So anyway, you can very easily, I might add, 
any uh, parameter on any plugin, you can put one of these modulators on. So that could be like an LFO, which is like a curve, you know, so it just basically turns the knob in a different way for you, mm -hmm. right? So like if I sat there and just something real simple, if I took like the volume knob on my voice and turned it up and down, right? Yeah. This will do that for you in like a thousand different ways. So one's like random, you know, just like it's, you know, it's at one and then it's at three and then it's at four and you can do it on time, off time. You can choose how, uh, what the timing is. You can have it synced to beat. So you can do that. This is just one of the features that is cool about the program. You can do that to any parameter on anything. So it's, it's a lot like modular synth, but in a DAW. Ah, wait. Do you think that is this the the what you were talking about? You should get before you get modular synth to fuck with. Uh, so the concept, no, that's not what I'm talking oh, okay. about. That's uh, VCV rack, mm -hmm. which is free and really cool. If you're in, if you're wanting to learn how to use modular synths, so the little rack stuff with all the little cables. Um, that's actually like. It has little cables that you drag on the screen. Right. So it's this good is, practice. This is, yeah, this is Because mod similar. modular, sorry to interrupt you, but modular synths are just so expensive that I assume that it would be better to just kind of start out with that program. And yeah. if you're not already into it, see if you're actually going to be in, into it. Yeah. And then also with that program, you can, with the VCV, um, you can try stuff and sort of see, get a more clear idea of what you want to get with your own rig oh that's cool because you can try out uh like simulations of that stuff in real life so yeah there's actually like clones of ac real existing modules mm -hmm. and then also just basic stuff that you're gonna need to know about such as lfos and blah blah, blah. oh that's cool yeah well but bitwig does a lot of this cool stuff and it has it's super modular minded and uh it has so many cool tools to you can basically do anything you can think of really you know like that's kind of how i operate when i'm in the recording program i sort of just think of something and i want to be able to do it really quickly yeah so something that you know something creative something uh, out of the box not, not that's uh, not your standard oh i need to throw an eq on here real quick but it's like i want to automate this really fast and then i want to split the the signal into low and high and do different effects on the low than the high you know that kind of thing yeah so all of this if you guys want to do that you should check out bitwig yeah and you can do it really easily and you can i think they have a pretty good demo like you can it's fully functional oh cool we'll link something about it yeah in the description there we go but uh, this Give well, them their money's worth. what the thing that I did find was not Bitwig associated apparently, but it's a God. What do you call those plug? Uh, yeah, it's a Waves plugin. It's a Waves plugin <coughs> for a vocoder that I want to use on the stuff that we're writing right now. So that's pretty cool. I think that was actually announced at this year's NAM. Really? Yeah. Wow. So I don't know how they Bitwig had it. Maybe they got it in advance. Maybe yeah, that's Ovox. That is a fucking sick vocoder. Yeah, bro. that's called Ovox. I was fucking. That's one thing that I did actually have time to sit down and fuck with for about one or two minutes at Nam, because yeah. you really don't have a ton of time to to mess with stuff. Everyone's trying to to mess with every company's stuff, and you're kind of like one of yeah. a million people trying to get on a couple of instruments. Um, but yeah, I got to mess with it for a minute, and I I really want to start using that. Uh, which actually, which actually, action. now that we're talking about all this, this uh, modular synth and the vocoder thing, there was a question this week that actually kind of applies to this stuff, and it's from, uh, it's from Riley. So Riley said, "Hi, I had a question for the podcast. I'm a big fan ever since I saw you guys play December Decimation with Winds of Plague and Spite in Panoma. Awesome, man! That was a really fun show." That was that winter. Do you yeah. remember that? That was super sick. Where they had like the fake bodies on the stage. Yeah, they had like dead Santas on the stage. Yeah, it was sick. Uh, my question is for Cheney. What is the vocal effect or style you use to make that glitchy sound? 
it sounds like nothing I've heard before, like a demon alien. For example, it happens on the song Black Static at around 2.57. How's it done? Well, Riley, so there are two ways that this vocal, this particular vocal you're talking about are done because I did it in the studio one way and I also do it live, not the same way that I did it in the studio. And um, basically I've, I've just always known that I wanted to like go the vocoder route and Naveen and I have had been talking about it for a while and you know we've mentioned before that we're both really into the soul niger or frederick thorndall special defects soul niger album and just all kinds of vocoders anyway this specific one kind of reminds me of that one so that's why i brought that up but uh <clears throat> and i have other big influences who are big into vocoders like karen dreyer uh, fever ray and the knife and um so what you're hearing on record, Naveen will be able to explain this more because I just kind of explained to him the vo what I wanted and we both kind of figured out together what the, the vocoder would sound like on my voice. Yeah. So what I'm actually doing in those parts is a high vocal. It's just, uh, yeah, just a normal vocal. It's just a normal vocal. And then Naveen was really into Eurorack synths, is still really into them and had a whole collection of them. So... He ran my voice through the the clouds. Is it called clouds filter or? Oh yeah, cloud. Yeah, I did it with clouds, and also a distortion trash master. But you can do it. Like I recreated it for when we did it live. Yeah. I recreated it in like two seconds in Ableton. Yeah. So and I will do the same in Bitwig. Right. Totally. And it's just a phaser. It's just like launching my vocals back and forth. It's not a phaser. Or what is it called? It's a. Uh, so it's a filter. A filter. Sorry, I always say phaser yeah. instead of filter. But a filter is just an EQ, essentially, <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. So it's a simple EQ. So it just does one function, which is um, it just sweeps down the high to low. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's sort of like turning down the volume almost. Right. But I have it set to go so fast that it sounds like you're screaming into like a fan or something. Yeah, it almost So it's an auto filter and it's uh like a ramp down shape. So imagine if you could just um turn it up and down really quickly but in in a um sharp way. Yeah. So that's what I that's So it's that and then distortion and that's it. Yeah, and so live, you'll see me hit like a stomp box live, and what that is an, is an AB switch. Uh, Damn, we could put that stomp box to the vocoder too. Yeah, exactly. So you wouldn't exactly. even have to have a secondary mic. That's pretty cool. Well, so at first I had a second. At first, that's what we were doing. At first, I had two microphones on stage with me. One would be in a stand, and that would be the vocoder. And our uh, set is MIDI controlled through Ableton. I don't know if you do you do it through Bitwig. Now I'm gonna, but I, I just have to program it all, you know, because so, it's already set up in Ableton. So that's through all of that, that's where our patch changes are for guitar. Uh, that's where yep. our lights are run from, and that's also where my vocal changes are, were run th through. I mean, it was it was patch changes for bass as well. But so what we were doing at first is the microphone that would be on the stand would be muted until the affected part came up, and then when an affected part came up, I would switch from my regular microphone, which was then being muted, so that I could switch to the second mic, and that would have the the distortion in it. Uh, that and, and I always like wanted to come up with a way to have this all happened on one microphone so now i have this ab switch i always fucking forget the name of the company when we start talking about it but uh it's well, they, don't, they don't endorse us so fuck yeah them. so fuck them <laughs> but anyway it's this australian company and my ab switch basically now does what we were doing with two microphones but it's just condensed it so when i hit the button and i switch over to the b microphone it's taking me to essentially my second microphone yeah and i don't really think we've totally perfected that yet because a if you listen to me live my vocals the the um 
the volume of the vocals will be a little off balance. I think we're still kind of tweaking that. And in that way, it might be better to do it might be better to have mics. two microphones. It's just a. I'm wondering I, if visually it's cooler too. You know, like the people can clearly see, like, oh, that's the affected mic, rather yeah. than they're not everybody's going to see you. <laughs> These things always fucking. These fall fucking off. little things are like shot. If you touch it. It not only does it up. fall off, but it's like, I'll find it in like the kitchen. Mine fell off the last time you had the camera on you, but I hit it. Slide that thing back on. Okay, anyway, but I'm wondering, yeah. you know what I mean? They're not going to be able to see you hit the pedal. I'm just wondering if it looks cooler, or not cooler, but you can just tell a little more. It's a little more theatric. Yeah, I think right? that it's a little th bit, it's cooler to look at. However, I don't know. It's like weird for me with the first microphone to know exactly what oh, to yeah. do with it. Yeah. I think that there will come a point where I start using a key keys on stage just to, uh, just for like vocoders or, you know, whatever else we come up with. And then it'll maybe look cooler. I don't know. I don't. You might need a little station i'm gonna need a little voc prog vocalist and station. See, the thing is we could use that switch in the station because you could have totally a mic with the keyboard right and then when you switch it over it goes to the soul niger yeah and then when you have or so a is like the digital we call that the digital digi witch digi witch so a is digi witch b would be Vocoder. Vocoder, yeah. So you could do that. Yeah, so this cool. is all hypothetical. I think we will probably do something like that. I would actually, because the... I would actually like to use um, maybe like a, an SM7B microphone to do that live. I want to use a little bit more expensive of, of, or better uh -huh. microphone than I would normally use in a live setting to walk around with. Uh, we could put one of these podcast stands on your keyboard stand. <laughs> That would be sick. We could do it. Yeah, we'll probably do something like that. We're kind of we're changing shit here. up a lot yeah. going into this new stuff that we're writing. I I think now for me personally, I really want to focus a lot on our live production, how we look as a live band. We've started doing that like we have a light show. That was something that was kind of important to us from the beginning. Yeah. And uh, I personally want to hone in on that even more. Uh, because I, I pers I love going to see uh, well produced gigs. Agree. I like or seeing I just that like type of a, shit. I like it when bands come through it. Like the venue here is real small that mm -hmm. we go see shows at, and when a band comes through with just a little bit of lights and maybe a smoke machine or something, it makes such a big difference. It just totally it'll change the show. Yeah. Like we saw Sumac and Converge back to back in the venue downtown in Santa Cruz, the Catalyst Atrium. And Sumac had like these red lights. Yeah. And it and Converge played with stage just stage lights, bright lights on. And Sumac's set just had that like ambient feeling that I personally want to go for as an artist and I really yeah. I loved that. But yeah, it doesn't it doesn't take much. And we have uh just like those four these moving, uh, they're like they they're like a bar, and mm -hmm. it has um, I think eight lights per bar, and they swivel around and do all kinds of stuff. That's all MIDI controlled too. Yeah, it's all MIDI controlled. So, I think that we'll probably continue to incorporate stuff that's MIDI controlled and just you know see where. But it was cool walking through the the like DJ section of Nam because they yeah. have it's filled with smoke machines and lights and you can kind of. Uh, get a feel for the type of stuff you want. I even saw a, a kind of fog that I want to change our smoke machines to to oh, have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That That's type spooky. of stuff is just so cool to me. I really like the the visual aspect of a live show or the visual aspect yeah, of the production. Yeah, so we're gonna probably start to tighten up on that shit a totally. little more. Did you see all the the costume area too? A lot, a lot of different costume stuff, makeup. Yeah. yeah. Area. Yeah. I saw all the pink guitars and all the pink microphones for us girls. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can only play pink stuff around. Well, not here. if you're metal. Yeah, and then we metal, play like you can pink snakeskin. Yeah, you got to be black and maybe like Go. bedazzled. Can you bedazzle stuff? It depends on what kind of metal you are. True. 
You know, there are like a lot of different kinds of metal. There certainly is. You know, then the, uh, one of my favorite things about Nam is the Nam questionnaire. You know how... Oh, when you run into someone? When you run into someone, there's like a list of things that you do. And I'm going to tell you guys about it. So first you're like, oh, hey, man, what's up? What's up? So how you been? What have you, you been up to? How's the band? Yeah, what's up with you guys? What's up with you guys? Uh, so when are you going on the road next? So got anything planned for the year? So then you get filled in on that. Yeah, so then you know all about that. And, oh, what happened to so-and-so who used to be in your band? Oh, and then, you know, you find out the story about that. And, all right, man, it was really good to catch up with you. Uh, I'm going to go. You left out a question. What was the question? I knew you were going to come in with one. It's, uh, you seen anything cool this year? Oh, you seen anything cool this year? Every time someone asked me that, I was like, do you really think that? I guess there are cool things. Like, Here's uh, a one cool thing. Okay, Sasha. Yeah. Sasha from Intranaut, Dunable, Dunable, Dunable. Dunable, I think. Okay. Sasha, how do you pronounce your last name correctly? Dunable Guitars. That's Dunable is, right? Guitars. Yeah. He has, they made this bong guitar. Or was it a bass? <laughs> yeah, it was I, a bong guitar. That's amazing, dude. So it was a guitar that you could smoke weed you out of. You can smoke weed out of the guitar. And I didn't get I didn't get a smoke weed out of it, and no one at Nam did because you can't smoke weed inside of Nam, unfortunately. Well, you can if you're Cheney. <laughs> well, you can do anything if you're me. I mean, <laughs> but yeah. So Nam, you know, a few weeks ago, I didn't have Nam FOMO at all, and I always had it. I was this, like, Cheney, I think we got to go to Nam. This weekend was one of the the best, the most fun. Nams. I've oh, I had, had a really good time. It was great. It was I had really a great fun. time. I got yeah. a little saucy up at the Hilton and told a bunch of people how much I love them. And we went to Denny's at four thirty. We went to Denny's. <laughs> yeah, oh, babe. What about the the? Remember, you were going to say something else about the Nam questionnaire, the post Nam thing. What's the post the, the, Nam? The pre and post Nam. Oh, thing. the post Nam. So after Nam, here's a rule. You have to hit up every single person that you saw at Nam, and like touch base yeah. for the future. <laughs> so it's like, what's up, man? And I do this too, so uh, I'm totally I'm do. making fun of myself because I course. hit up like a bunch of people after Nam, and I, it's like, what's up, man? So good to see you at Nam. Yeah. Hope. Let me know if you guys ever come through here. Yeah. Uh, so let me I know, would man. Love to you, see you. you got a place to stay anytime. Yeah. Bro. You're. Uh, then love also, you, man. What you have to do is if you, um, if you, but if everyone you, I say that to is true for the record. Yeah, of course. No, I mean, we're just making it's fun totally of ourselves. totally genuine. Or another popular thing to do, which I've been doing today, is you see one of your friends post some pictures from Nam, but you didn't see him. Yeah. So you have to comment to let all of his followers know that you were there. Oh, I wish I saw you, man. Dude, how'd we miss each other, bro? Next year, dude. <laughs> Next year. And on the w leading into Nam, you gotta be like, dude. You got any performances? Yeah, or you know, make a comment. Yeah, see you, Nam. See you, Nam, dude. It's gonna be sick. I there is one person, uh, Rowan from I built I built the sky. Oh, we didn't ever see him. A shout out to I built the sky, yeah. Rowan and Sam. Y'all are that the sucks. shit. We had shots it, like dude. a year ago in Germany, and we got to go see them live, and it was sick. But they were they came all the way from Australia to Nam, and we did not see them. And I told Rowan, I was like can't wait to see you at nam and then we touched base after we didn't see each other the first day of nam and it's like hope to see you tomorrow man that sucks man and i fully intended on going yeah. to his like his uh demo yeah and i didn't make it to I his think demo. next year we're gonna have to make like an itinerary a i tried itinerary. this year i tried i wrote down everyone's demos who i wanted to see and i didn't see a goddamn one of them because you just get stuck in nam dude and if you know a lot of people then you do the stop and chat like every yeah. two seconds yeah. so you're yeah. always just being it's like going to a show where you're where every one of your friends came to it i had a great time dude I it's it. so fun and i saw kaz rodriguez kaz rodriguez is a sick as fuck drummer yeah jesus like, christ uh, well i didn't even know that he was doing any demos and then my brother just tech my phone died so my brother just texted Cheney, yo, Kaz is playing over here at Roland. 
So we just like ran over there Mm -hmm. and saw him play. He's a really sick drummer who, um, he does a lot of session work, but he also does like his own music and plays drums to it. So he also, if if you guys are drummers, he put out a whole record of songs that have no drums on them so that drummers could play to them. And it's, that's a really cool idea. And a shitload of drummers, you will use his tracks like if they go to do the minor thing or like a oh, really? bump. Yeah, a few drummers have done it. Wow, that's cool. Uh, Alex has. Rudy? And, yep. And that Sput drummer from Snarky Puppy. Oh, yeah. Okay. He played to a cat. Oh, a he, he's track. someone who's played with Dommy, the keyboard player. Yeah. So this dude's legit. And I met him and he's super cool. Super cool guy. Very good. Yeah, that's rad. Um, who's the person that you named before? Oh, Alex, Rudy. Uh, oh, a picture popped up. Every Nam, uh, this picture pops up of... Now it's been eight years of me, ago. It was me, you, and Rudy meeting uh, Frederick Thorndall. On that was like eight a, fucking years ago? It was eight fucking years ago on a total potato cam. We all look so young <laughs> and like just not as clean cut as we are now. It's I'm just not very so, clean cut. Look at this do, man. It's so like cute. Like this do elephant in the room address the do yeah address the do what's up with that I mean I'm you're, it out, you're getting dude. you're getting the the like weird middle range hair right now you think it's got all all the way to mid range no it's got to be like down to your ears I'm growing it out going full metal what well, do you think, we'll see Jane? how the, I don't think much of of it I think uh, I think we'll just see how that goes. I was thinking it was kind of funny today that you get ready for the podcast. Like yeah. you go like take a shower and do your hair and everything. Mm-hmm. And I just stroll in here with the same shirt. <laughs> As every other And podcast. all I do is like take off whatever hat I'm wearing. That's kind of like. not even do that. That's kind of like tour though. Yeah. I'm kind of TBH full disclosure. I'm like obsessive about showering on tour. But I'm like a weirdo and I can't fall asleep if I'm sweaty or like. I have like strange skin things going on. So I have to take a shower before I go to sleep. So it's like my mission in life to, I love taking showers and you're, you could go probably a week, two weeks. Well, no, I don't want to want to do that. No, but you could. I could, if I don't work out or like do anything that, uh, expending energy, sweating. Yeah. It's like, I'm good. Like for instance, if we were stuck um, in the middle of the forest day one well first of all I would need to find water to drink obviously but if that had nothing to do with it and it was just about showering I would be on the fucking hunt for water to shower in all day really in a forest in a forest you'd be like I gotta go find somewhere to take yeah it. Hmm. that's like what well, eating and showering I think I've seen you put more effort into trying to find a shower than food on tour yeah, I would take, if it came down to food or showering, I would go a day without food to take a shower. But you're the reason why we go to uh, Planet Fitness. I am. Into- you wanted to take a shower, right? Yeah, and I've also been known to, uh, so sometimes when you go into like truck stop bathrooms, people will accidentally leave the showers open. So I've been known to, when we're like at a gas station getting gas, all fucking like sneak into that shower and just take a quick 30 minute or 30 second rinse off for free sneak move hell yeah dude I like it. get myself a free nice shower i've gotten some good showers I think it's that for way. one the cost of one shower at a truck stop you can get a 24 hour i mean sorry planet fitness month membership it's for the cost of two showers but yeah you're right right okay yeah so it's 10 if you only go to one but mm-hmm. 20 if you want to go okay so yeah two showers yeah Still, I mean, that's pretty good. So too. it's rough out here. It's a, it's a rough life. Yeah. <laughs> out here just stealing showers in my 30s. Sorry, I'm yawning. I'm tired. I'm not going to lie. I love it, though. I wouldn't trade this this life or world for fucking anything, man. No. Nope. All sure right, wouldn't. so let's get to the questions. It's quizzy question time. Um. We need a sound clip for that, too, Naveen. So you want to go that route with the show? Like a show, like show? a funny show. Because I like it. Um, hmm. I can make. Why jingles. don't you guys vote? <laughs> Should we do jingles or not? 
<laughs> I kind of like it with no jingles. Yeah. I mean, it makes it a little more goofy. I mean, not goofy, but it makes it a little more, like, corny. What? Rock in the morning. Yeah. Like that. I've thought about hooking I've up a little, like, soundboard, though. Yeah, I'm sure you'd have a good one, but... I don't know. I'm not really a funny... I'm not really yeah. into funny stuff. I don't That's like true. to laugh or smile. No. All right. This <laughs> is a, f- a question here. I'm smiling. And it's going to be from Matt. And Matt wants to know... My question for both of you, former metal vocalist myself, and I know I've always had a list of vocalists that just blow me away and have a style or technique I could never, ever master in 20 lifetimes. What people slash artists make that list for you can be non-metal or metal vocals? Chaney, take it away. Well, let's go for, let's talk about vocalists and other musicians because, you know. Let's just keep it vocalists. What vocalists do things that blow me away and have a style or technique I could never ever master in twenty lifetimes? Um, Active Child. Active Child's yeah, voice. This is a singing voice I'm talking about that's just amazing and angelic and I don't think I could ever do that in twenty lifetimes. True that. So who are you who are some of your favorite vocalists though? Let's just let's in metal? divert a little bit. In metal? Yeah. My favorite screaming vocalists, um, I have quite a few. I think I've said this before. I like to listen to vocals and just take a little bit from all of them. Um, okay. This isn't like all of my favorite vocalists, but off the top of my head. Michael Barr, who used to be in Volumes, is one of my favorite vocalists. I really dig his mid-range ap- approach. I like people who can nail the mid range um, in a very heavy way, and every and I really like people who nail their shit live. And every video I've seen of that guy live, he's coming through like full forced Dang. with screaming vocals. Uh, I don't know you like that guy. Yeah, his 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 screaming. He's the one who's not in volumes anymore. He's like R and B now. Yeah, yeah. Is he um, still doing that? I don't know. I've heard rumors that he might be good. back in volumes. Yeah, I remember that too. Uh, Johnny Davey is one of my favorite vocalists who I've talked, I've expressed my love for Naveen's uh, project Flesh Rot with Johnny before. Uh, And JFAC. I've always listened to JFAC. Um, Breeze. Breeze all over the place. (laughs) Johnny actually, you know, it's funny (laughs) that people perceive JFAC as being that kind of band because there was really only that Doom EP that really totally sounded like that. Okay, but were they the first band to do that? To do Breeze? Yeah. I don't know. There are a lot of bands coming out around that time that did Breeze, and the other one that really comes to mind is Waking the Cadaver. They were, and I don't know which band came out first, because I remember they both, JFAC, I think, had a heavier hit on MySpace, but they both kind of like hit on MySpace at the same time. Yeah. So Johnny is one of my favorite vocalists. He's just like a fucking beast. If you yeah, see him live, his presence is crazy. He's a big dude. And yeah, he's just a beast. He's got a fantastic range. Um, Darius from Spite is probably my favorite. Uh, up and comer. Up and comer. <laughs> he's getting the Cheney up and comer award. <laughs> um that kid he just sounds like a maniac he's got this maniacal like mid-range thing and i really like that Uh, i like him because i like him and johnny and all these people that you're mentioning because they have the range yeah me too i'm I'm more into people who have a variety of voices it's not even like a range like oh high and low it's like different sounds yeah exactly yeah. and i really enjoy that because i think that it it's um expanding the vocal thing yeah i'm i'm cool if people do like super monotone vocals it's not really as much of a thing now as it used to be back in the day but uh it, frankly it gets kind of boring to me um and i think that's why i i've always been like a little more partial to like metal core like mid-range screamers if you will and with that being said sam carter is one of my favorite vocalists he's got this pitched scream Mm. that that i have is that who's that 
Architects. I thought that was me, yeah. Yeah. And I their last record yeah, I just really killer. love. Super killer. Um Demon, Derek Redquist, the Faceless, one of my favorite vocalists. His I, he's just got a very, very powerful presence and I enjoy that. Um there's a, Randy Blythe was the first person who screamed who I fell in love with as a as a screamer. Yeah. Uh What about dude from Dimu? Dude from Dimu. He's great. That I was sort of the his, vocal effect was vocals. actually uh mildly inspired inspired by Dimu. Yeah, it was. Absolutely. Uh Nurgle Behemoth, love his vocals. Uh Tommy from BT Bam, I love his vocals. Uh there are just so many people, man. I could and all name the on there. I could name something that I enjoy about a lot of voices a lot of voices and it's kind of goes back to what we were saying i really like someone with a range and i really draw from a lot of different ranges and styles and i'm just really i really love the art form of screaming and yeah. that's it i and i'm sure that naveen can probably say the same thing about drummers it's like i'm not just getting influence uh, and and with talking about this shit, I'm just talking strictly about the sound of these people's vocals. It's like if we're talking yeah. about lyrics, then I'm probably going to talk about other people. Um, TLC. What's that? TLC. Oh, Creep. The song <laughs> yeah. TLC in the band. It was just a bad joke. Oh, that me. was a horrible joke. If people don't laugh at the joke, then I just didn't get it. It's not funny. But. I don't know. There are so many fucking good vocalists in this world. It's hard, so hard to name them off. And Alex Arian, despised icon, one of my favorite vocalists. Uh, there are a lot, hey. man. There are a lot of fucking good. What about covers it? Good, good, good people. I'd out have to there. say that that Cheney rattled off some of my favorite vocalists too. So yeah. So there you go. Um, yeah. On to the next question. On to the next. Some Q&A up in this bitch. Devin says, Hey, Chaney and Naveen, can you talk about what your social media management process looks like for Entheos? All right, I got this, Chaney. I, I love this. the podcast and look forward to listening every week. Peace, Devin. So the way I approach our social media presence is Chaney does it all. <laughs> and I don't, <laughs> I don't, there's no like management of anything. I just, if I get the, the, if I start to feel like I want to make a post, then I make one. Yeah, but you're strategic in promoting certain things, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, totally. it's like, oh, I if mean, we're going to have a merch sale, we're going to run some little ads on there. Yeah, um, definitely. If we have merch sales, I run a few ads. If we're releasing new stuff, I'll probably run a few ads when we do that. Um, I try not to overdo it with the ads because I think it gets kind of annoying, yeah. frankly. However, I don't think that half of the people who follow our page are seeing our stuff. Right. So it's kind of like a catch 22. You don't want to annoy people too much, but you also want everyone who follows your page to see what you're posting about so that it can, you know, kind of get, uh, gain a little traction. Um, I don't post on Instagram as much as Facebook just because of the nature of Instagram. I don't find that as often there's an important, picture or video that I haven't already posted mm -hmm. I don't like to post things a million times but right. but you know if they happened I'll, I'll usually post them like right when they happen a couple of times and then maybe wait a, a year or six months to post about them again merch I post about I post like a sale maybe once a month once every couple of months I try not to do that all the time because I think that if you run a sale all the time you're kind of blowing it and people just will wait for the sale to happen yeah it's sort of centered around something yeah but i don't know man it's like you kind of just have to feel it out sometimes i wonder if i've posted things a little too much and i try to like chill out yeah but probably not you know i mean most people post a lot so yeah people are used to it Totally. It's something that I'm conscious about on my personal page as well. You know, I'm aware that people don't want to see 
exclusively stri- screaming videos of me like every day because they I don't. Do, they do though. Yeah, but I I think that if I did one every day, then it wouldn't receive as much traction as maybe if I posted one once a week. Because then once if you start, it's what did what did Evan call this? The scarcity. Oh, uh, you gotta. You have to create take away the supply. Yeah, you have to create a a de- a demand for what you're putting out. So if yeah. you're putting out like a cut the supply off. Yeah, cut the supply <laughs> off. If you're if I was putting out a screaming video every day, then people would scroll by it and be like, "Oh, another fucking screaming video." Okay, I already know what's up with this. Yeah. Or, so I that's try to I, be. Yeah, that's why I really like. Um, the only person that I'm aware of that I follow that legitimately just posts one video a week and that's it is David Goggins. Yeah. And so, granted, he's got a, a bajillion followers, but if you look at the amount of people that watch his video compared to his followers, it's really high. Yeah. And that's because he only does one video a week. That's it. Yeah. And whenever it comes by, I'm watching it. I'm not going to skip by it. Totally. He doesn't have one out every day. Totally. Uh, and I kind of feel that way about podcasts as well. You know, there are a lot of... Uh, just about everything that you can release, there are a lot of theories behind why you should post every day. Yeah. But that's just not my style. I don't really agree with Most that. Most people do the post every day approach, right? Or, yeah. yeah. I think it gets a little, I don't know, you got to you gotta create a little demand, I think. Yeah. But yeah, it's I mean, all up to you in the long run, however you want to push your shit. Or don't want to at all. Yeah. I think that sometimes when, if we're not posting one day and we see other, other people posting, I mean we as the, the royal we. The collective. The collective we. We might uh, feel like we really need to post something that day. Oh, man, I want people to think about me. But it's not like that. Well, it's more like anything else if you're... The consistency is key. And that's where I'm. my downfall is. It's like... If, I, if you could just commit to something simple once a week. Once every two weeks. Fuck, man, that's pretty easy. It's more than I'm doing now. Yeah. with videos at yeah. least totally so i'm really trying to get back on one video a week on that bitch yeah i think that i should do one video every week or it's like every surely couple i can weeks. find enough time to make one measly video a week give yeah. me a break right i live with my drums now they're in this other room like it's not like i have to go 20 minute drive to do it now yeah and they're totally mic'd up and yeah good to go yep <sighs> all right so next anyway. question Next question. Shelton says, Cheney mentioned that she digs Code Orange. I love those guys as well. Before I give my question, I just wanted to say that I saw them opening for Deftones in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. That sounds like a sick show because I love Deftones as well. Have since I was a teenager. Anyway, do you like any other modern hardcore bands such as Knock Loose, Nails, Harm's Way, Jesus Peace, or Vane? If not, check them out, please. The answer is yes. I love Nails. Huge fan of nails. Um, we checked out Knock Lo- Loose. That was pretty cool, right? Knock Loose is pretty yeah. cool. I'm not the most into the vocals in Knock Loose. I mean, no offense, but it's just not totally my thing. I feel like if I listened to it a few more times, I would be a little more yeah, into it. Because, dude, with a lot of my favorite records, I just have to listen to it a few times over for it to really settle. Um, yeah, I mean, I might not even like the the band or the artist when I first hear it sometimes. Me too. I I think I've said on here before, Circa Survive, one of my favorite bands. Mm, all of their records except for Jew Turna, I've had to listen to like three or four times before I really loved it. But uh-huh. Something clicks. Yeah, something clicks. I need to check out uh, Vain and Jesus Peace. I do too. I've so. seen, and Harm's Way, I've seen like the Hate 5-6 videos of all three of these bands but i haven't listened to them on record harm's way as vocalist though is this huge muscular man right and he just totally fits aesthetically like the hardcore front man yeah. he's just like this freaking out like big dude well that sounds sick it's pretty fucking <laughs> sick to watch like the the video that i saw was dope and uh yeah. So yeah, I need to check out those other bands. I love hardcore. I'm uh, I'm a fan. So I'm 
I can't wait. Terror is coming here next month, and I awesome. fucking love Terror. Yeah, I'll, so. I'll check it out. I also, too, love hardcore. Yeah, and Naveen loves hardcore. He was in this band called Hoods, yeah. if you guys. I'm old school, bro. Okay? So. So there you go. So I dig that kind of it's stuff. It's pretty hardcore up in this bitch. I've been listening to a little more deathcore these days, though. Yeah? What kind of deathcore are you into? Um, I like Thy, Thy Art is Murder. Yeah, they're sick. I like Spite. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aversion's Crown. Nice. Oh, what's that? Infinite Annihilator? Are they deathcore? Infant Annihilator? Yeah. I think I was so. jamming that a bit. It's cool. I yeah. Like it all. I'm, I'm the kind of deathcore I'm into is a little more is like I'm really into despised icon. I think people call that yeah. deathcore. Um fit for an autopsy, I think you'd probably refer to as deathcore. They're fucking sick. Their vocalist is really, really sick. I think one of the reasons why I'm I gravitate towards it is because the production's good. The production so is like, always good on deathcore yeah. albums. Yeah. Whereas with metal, that's not gonna be like you don't it's just you don't have to have super sick production in metal well there's this weird thing in metal in where metal. some yeah. people like f- really fucking hate really good production <clears throat> like yeah. they think that Rebellious. it means that your band is gent and they yeah. hate gent for some reason like they like, really yeah i just don't care i listen to whatever i don't listen care at all i love good production to oh. the point that i don't really always like listening to stuff that has bad production it's hard for me to listen to i agreed unless it's older yeah unless it's older um but yeah so it's harder for me to get over it these days yeah because it's so easy to have like, good production God damn. But you know there are always going to be purists about this kind of shit. So what can you do? Yeah, some not, people. Not yeah. my problem. That ain't my problem. All but right, uh, how far are we into this episode, Naveen? I we got to ask the usual question. Damn, fifty-six minutes. All right. Well, we've got time for one last question. <clears throat> Let's. You want to do this big one? Yep. This is a good one too, by the way. Yes, it is. Hey guys, big fan of your show. And of Anthios. <clears throat> I'm in my early oh, 30s. Oh, this is from Daniel. <clears throat> oh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm in my early 30s, and I've been in 12-step recovery for a handful of years. I've played in multiple bands in the past, all of which were darker, more moody, and aggressive styles of music. In recovery, I've learned that my life literally depends on incorporating positive attitudes, actions, and values in all that I do. I've struggled with understanding whether or not playing and listening to darker forms of music is more of a healthy outlet for me now or to fuel the fire of my negativity. Like unreasonable anger and depression. Sometimes I feel strange about liking so much aggressive or sad music when I have a hard time tolerating aggression and self-pity in my day-to-day. I'd be interested to hear your guys' thoughts on getting a little older and balancing out emotional well-being with engaging in darker styles of music and art that generally gets associated with angsty teenagers by a general society. Thanks, guys. P.S. got to play with Animosity at the Pound back in around 05. Forever grateful. Dang. Damn, Naveen, you're old as fuck. You've been yeah. playing shows since 05. So I actually think about this a lot, and in I'm 34 now, and uh, I... Th- I've had stints in my life where I don't really listen to metal, but I've always been into heavy stuff and dark stuff and sick, twisted stuff. And I think that for me, that's the healthy outlet. Agreed. That's the healthy outlet. That was exactly for, what I was going For where your say. anger should go, right? Because if I don't have that, then it's going to come out when, when I freak out one day at work or something and punch someone in the face. Totally. So, yeah, I think it does... In my mind, I think it fuels the fire, but you're it, that fire is taking it out of you. Yeah, you're getting you're, out. It's the your your fuel is going over there. I mean, think about this. Like, f- I don't know if you're like this, Dan, but for me, since I was a kid, like the reason that I got into metal is because I needed a healthy outlet to get my anger out. It's like from the beginning. When I was fucking 12 years old going and moshing at shows and like wearing all black and all of this stuff, it was that was my way of pushing my aggression out. I've never really been a super angry person. Yeah. In fact, 
I think you can read um, a lot of the lyrics that I've written and find a lot of positive themes within that because even my positivity will channel into this like kind of darkness. But that for me, that's the art form. And Cheney and the art form aren't necessarily like that's a way that I can separate yeah. myself from the yeah. emotions. And uh, I mean, dude, I, I, that's how I'm a happy person. That's how I've remained happy is just like putting out any kind of music just and that's how it comes out. Yeah. And people have different outlets for their dark side or whatever but i think it's it's sort of important for me personally to realize that i do sort of have a dark side i do have yeah. anger yeah. i do have all these things and it seems like we're sometimes living in a world where people want to deny that that exists and that's why some people like watching violent movies or playing violent video games. Or, you know, I, I like listening to aggressive music. It's an outlet. Yeah, me. me too. And so it's not really a question of what, how, how are you, you know, you're, how are you going to get rid of these feelings or this side of you, but it's how you're going to health, healthy, a healthy way of incorporating it into your life and managing it. Yeah. Because it's obvious that, you know, you've gone through some shit and, you I, I think that to say that there isn't a dark side there is is going back to that toxic positivity that we were talking about before because a lot of you'll see these like health yeah. gurus on the internet now who like to pretend that there's no fucking darkness in this life and that yeah. everything is rainbows and unicorns and that if you just wake up with a positive attitude every day, everything's going to be great. It's like, no, some days are, you're going to wake up and you're going to be like, fuck this. Exactly. And uh, that's just how it is, man. And it's, this is, uh, for me, this is the way to get that shit out in a healthy way. Yeah. And not let it manifest as me doing something crazy and that's why I've always been thankful for art because I don't know I don't know where Chaney that kid who was angry at a lot of shit would have ended up if I didn't have an artistic outlet things could have been really bad I know people from when I was a kid who don't who haven't necessarily had a way to get things out they don't know where to where to put all of that anger yeah. and it comes out in horrible ways so yeah. so i personally am just really thankful to have this for that reason me too and it's not even might not even be anger it could be more like frustration yeah or just um that high energy side of you that's totally just like you know you're like, ah, you want to like freak out yeah you know mm -hmm. and i ha i have that i've yeah. always had that since i was a kid yeah I used to like wrestle my stuffed animals, you know, so, and I think, I don't know if, I don't know if other people feel that way, but that I would assume in and, and one way or another they do. Cause it's like, it feels good to hear something super heavy. You yeah, know? man. You're just like, you know, yeah, dude. You know, when you're at like a show me. and like that heavy fucking groove hits and you just feel like your problems dissolve. Yeah. You're just keyed in with the breakdown or like whatever is going on. Or you, you throw yourself into a pit and you like kind of wrestle people around you and you're all sweaty, but you're the happiest person in the world. It's primal. That's yeah. what it's all it's about. Primal. That's why we do this shit, man. Yeah. So new entheos is heavier, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you think so? Yeah. I don't know if it's heavier. It's got a breakdown. It does have a breakdown, but in a lot of ways, I think that it's like not. It reminds me more of the world without us than our heavier stuff. Really? Because I think it's a little more aggro than that. Like, the new song has a really fast blast beat. It's got a breakdown. Stuff that we that didn't happen in the uh, world. But it also world, has the, really slow us. parts. It's got everything. It's, it's got, got slow a parts. Everything it's got all mixed up into one. It's got bass. <clears throat> yeah. I know y'all been worried about that. Someone I have, played at least bass I on have. it. Someone did play bass on it. We won't say who. Wait for the big reveal. That'll be a mystery. But Cheney, you want to add anything on to that? Uh, that was a good question. 
because that's something I actually wanted to talk about. That was a fantastic question, man. And you know what? Good luck in your recovery. Uh, <clears throat> neither of us are addicts. I don't know what it's like to go through that, but I've we've both seen friends struggle with addiction, and it's yeah. uh, I can't even imagine. It's awful. Yeah, I mean, it, it's probably one of those things that's going to always be there, and you just got to fight. But hey, if you guys have any questions, please hit us up at coppercrabpodcast at gmail.com. We love y'all. Also, subscribe to the YouTube. Yes. Subscribe to the Apple. Also, yeah, subscribe to the Entheos YouTube as well, because if you're there, you're going to be one of the first people to hear about all this cool new shit. There we go. Also, we have mugs online on the Copper Crab store. For real, we love and appreciate you guys. I hope you have a good week. Uh, All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. See you next week. Peace.